Suppose someone goes to the store and buys some apples. And suppose that the total amount they spent on apples was $12. $12. Dollars. Is that a ratio unit? Well, no. It's not a fraction. It's not a ratio. But now suppose that someone goes to the store, and instead of telling you how much they spent on apples, I'm just going to tell you the price of apples. Um, let's say the price of apples is, uh, say, $3. These are really expensive apples. What, what does it mean if you say the price of apples is $3? But what you really mean is that the price is $3 per apple. So you go to the store and you find that the price of apples is $3 per apple. Well, now the units are dollars per apple. Is that a ratio unit? Yes, it is a ratio of two units. It's a ratio unit, um, two units that form a fraction. So um, we've seen that the total amount that you spend does not have a ratio unit, but prices have ratio units. So I'd like to start um, this material by talking about prices. Now, obviously, prices are not very important in chemistry and physics, but I think that people have a pretty good intuition for what prices mean. So if you can understand um, what it means for price to be a ratio unit, I think that will help you a lot in understanding the other ratio units that are less familiar that you're going to see in chemistry and physics. So let's talk for a while about what prices really mean, and that'll give us a deeper insight into ratio units in general. Uh, so let's stick uh, again with this price of apples, of $3 per apple. And again, obviously, I did not pick this to be realistic. These are very expensive apples, so we're not trying to be realistic. Uh, I'm just trying to pick a nice, easy-to-use number, uh, a price of $3 per apple. Let's work on interpreting this ratio unit more clearly. Um, the trick that will help us here is to combine this whole expression into a single ratio. Now, right now, the units form a ratio, but the number is not part of the ratio yet. It's much easier to interpret ratio units if you com uh, combine the number and the units into a single ratio. So how can we combine this number and the units into a single ratio? Uh, if your math skills are pretty good, it shouldn't be much trouble for you to combine these into a single ratio. Uh, but if you're having trouble with that, let's go through it together. Well, the key that hopefully you've already learned in your courses is that we can treat units like variables. We can treat units like variables. Um, so first of all, um, what's the relationship here between the three and these units? Are they being added, subtracted, multiplied, or divided? Well, let's say I wrote 3y. What does that mean? Well, that really means 3 times y, right? Well, remember, we're supposed to treat these units uh, as if they were just a variable. So we're just supposed to treat them as if they were just y. So if we say $3 per apple, what we really mean is 3 times dollars per apple. So first of all, we can say this is really 3 times dollars per apple. Uh, now, it's easier to combine these if they're both fractions. The unit here is a fraction, but this number is not a fraction yet. How can we make the number 3 into a fraction? Well, that's easy. We just put it over 1. Now these are both fractions, and now we can just multiply two fractions together. Well, we know how to multiply two fractions together. If we multiply these two fractions together, we would get 3 times dollars on the top, that's just $3, and 1 times apples on the bottom. Well, 1 times apple would just be written as one apple, just like one times y would just be written as one y. So now we've accomplished our goal. Remember I said it was going to be useful if we could combine both the number and the units into a single ratio. 
Well, now we've combined both the number and the units into a single ratio. Um, and uh, that single ratio is $3 for one apple. $3 for one apple. So let's rewrite the price in that form. $3 for one apple. Let's get some practice with that. Um, let's say that another price is, uh, say, $4 per orange. Try writing that down as a single ratio. $4 per orange. Well, that's 4 over 1 times dollars over oranges. So that would be $4 for every one orange. Now, of course, if we wanted to, now we could leave the number 1 out of the denominator because 1 times any variable is just that variable. So it's not necessary to write the number 1 down here. However, for our purposes, we definitely do want to write the number one in the denominator. As we're going to see as the videos proceed, it's actually very useful to our intuitive understanding to write a number on both the top and the bottom of the ratio. It's going to be very useful to us to have a number on both the top and the bottom of the ratio. So even though it's not mathematically required to include this one on the bottom, we're definitely going to want to keep that number one because we're going to find that it's so helpful for understanding what these ratios mean. So here we have some more very expensive fruit. We have uh, some pears that cost $8 per pear. Now, once again, please try to combine both the number and the units here into a single ratio. Well, this would give us $8 for one pair. And again, even though it's not mathematically necessary to keep the number one on the bottom, we actually want to keep the number one to help our intuitive understand. Well, hopefully you're finding this pretty easy. It's pretty easy uh, to take any of the expressions we've had that have a number and a ratio unit and combine the number together with the units to get a single ratio. So let's get back, back, back to these apples. Remember that the price of these apples was $3 per one apple. And now that we've rewritten it like this, we can get a more intuitive understanding of what this ratio unit means. What does it mean to say that the price of apples is $3 per apple? Well, now we see what it means. It means that if you buy one apple, it will cost you $3. That's the meaning of the price. And that's our key concept for this whole series of videos. This might seem pretty trivial, but we're, we're going to see that when it comes to physics and chemistry concepts, even though this seems trivial, it's an idea that a lot of students are not understanding and not applying. So let's try to take our time and understand it here in the realm of prices where it's more obvious. If you buy one apple, um, that will cost you $3. That's what it means when we say the price of apples is $3 per apple. This is telling us how much it would cost to buy one apple. So let's go back. Let's say um, I, that the price of oranges is $4 per orange. What does that really mean? What does it mean if we say the price of oranges is $4 per orange? Well, let's combine this into a single ratio. It really means that if we buy one orange, we'll have to pay $4. What does it mean if I tell you that the price of pears is $8 per pair? Well, we can combine these into a single ratio. And now we can see that if I tell you that the price of pears is $8 per pair, what that really means is that if you buy one pair, it will cost you $8. What does it mean if the price of grapefruit is $7 per grapefruit? 
Let's combine these into a single ratio with a number on both the top and the bottom. And now we can see it means that if you buy one grapefruit, it'll cost you $7. By the way, now um, you can see why it's useful to have a number on both the top and the bottom of the ratio. Even though mathematically we don't need to write down this number one, writing down the number one helps us to interpret these ratio units. Writing down the number one is, reminds us that this is telling us that one grapefruit costs $7. One pear would cost $8. One orange would cost $4. Or one apple would cost $3. So now we're seeing how useful it is to have a number to go with both the unit on the top of the ratio and a number to go with the unit on the bottom of the ratio. And the number on the bottom of the ratio is one.